Gone Freaks, a young fearless boy discovers that his father, whom he thought was dead, is still alive, living as a renowned hunter. Pursuing the footsteps of his father and hoping to find him, Gon leaves his home to become a skilled hunter. For that, he passes the hunter examination, during which he meets and bonds with three other candidates, Kurapika, Leorio, and Kilua, each of whom has a fascinating tale of their own that is intricately intertwined with Gon's. In the last episode, Kilua was kidnapped by his lootless family of assassins while Gon and his gang were on their way to rescue him. Kurapika successfully finds a place that allows for tourists to visit the Zoldik family estate and books a ticket to head there in three days. The gang reaches the Dentora region where by the help of a tourist group, they make their way to Kukuru Mountain. While the tourist guide is busy explaining the Zoldik family history of assassinations, Leorio notices that there are two men at the back of the bus who don't look like ordinary tourists. They reach the first gate of the Zoldik estate, which is dubbed as the door to Hades. Gone curious as always, asks the guide if there was any way possible for him to enter the gate, to which he is sharply told no. Just then, the two strange-looking men confidently make their way towards the gate, saying how all the fake rumors are just there to scare everyone off. They force the guard named Zebro to give them the key to the door, which he reluctantly does. The men enter the gate, making Zebro sigh and say, Mike, we'll eat between meals again. And sure enough, seconds later, we hear screams from inside, followed by a beastly hand that throws the two men's skeletons outside. The two Tourists run away, leaving Gon and his friends behind. Gon tells Zebro that they are friends of Kilua, and they are here to meet him and would like to go through the gate where the monster resides and not through the seven testing gates. Knowing Gon is not one to be convinced, he tells him to wait while he makes a quick call to the family butler. That bit doesn't last long and they are refused entry. Not taking no for an answer, Gon calls the butler and screams at him that they are Kilua's friends. However, the butler sharply tells Gon that he could be one of the Zoldik's family enemies who are imitating and disguising disguised as Kilua's friend and asked them politely to leave. Eyes filled with determination, Gon attempts to climb the gate. Seeing this, Zebro intervenes and takes him through the gate. It is at this moment they come face to face with Mike, a large guard dog that even poor Gon feels helpless against as he sweats profusely from head to toe. Luckily, fate is on their side and Mike doesn't attack, allowing Zebro to head them towards the house. Zebro takes them to the servants' quarters where they meet Sequant, another guard that lives there. Sequant tells them to give up and go home since many challenges await ahead. Gon stands firm on his decision and so Zebro trains Kurapika and Leorio to manage to push the first of the seven gates, which are humongous doors that need to be opened to enter the Zoldic estate. Scene shifts to an underground tunnel where a girl named Kaludo follows a cyborg-like lady to a room where we see Kilua chained up and beaten by a boy named Miluki. Miluki lets his tongue slip and tells him that Gon is here to see him. With a smile, Kilua replies that Gon will pass through the gates and come for him. Meanwhile, Sequant advises Kurapika and Leorio to simultaneously push the gate together and quickly enough their strength combines together to budge the gate. This however proves not enough as the gate bangs shut again. The two go at it again and the gate budges slightly and then Gon helps them to finally push open the gate. The cyborg-like lady tells the butler to stop anyone from interfering with her critical time with Kilua. The trio are stopped midway by a young apprentice butler who draws a line and tells them not to cross it. Stubborn as ever, Gon crosses it multiple times, only to be thrown far away by the apprentice. Blood splattered all over the dusty ground, Gon doesn't stop there but charges at her and this time manages to splash the pillar to her right and says he is only here to meet his friend. Fear develops in her eyes and a single tear cascades down her cheeks as she tells Gon to save Kilua, but her words are left uncompleted after a bullet is shot at her. The cyborg lady with a sinister smile and evil chuckle tells them that she has a message from Kilua. She tells them to leave since he can't meet them as of now. A flashback shows a small peek into Kilua's past. Following a day of roaming around, he comes back home. He sees his brother who tells him to meet their mother, but he avoids the apprentice girl. Canary greets him with a smile, but Kilua ignores her and hides in a tree. She greets him again later and tells how she is the newest apprentice butler. Before their conversation tallies further, her sharp senses warn her of intruders, and she leaves to deal with them. A group of men pay no heed to her warning of crossing the line, and once they do, Canary shows them her real abilities. Her supersonic speed and agility is more than a match for them, and without breaking a sweat, she smashes their faces to the ground, leaving them moaning and groaning. She even uses the rhythm echo technique against their leader, thus defeating him. Zebro enters to clean up the mess and feeds their bodies to a rather hungry Mike. Kilua later asks the girl if they could be friends, which makes her blush rose red. But from the corner of her eye, she notices 
versus his mother. So with a heavy heart, she declines his friendship. Back to the present, we see Miluki enter the dungeon and whip Killua again, making him spit blood. Meanwhile, his mother heads to meet Gon and tells him to leave since Killua had stabbed her and his brother in the past and is now here to pay the price. Out of nowhere, she starts screaming that her father shouldn't interfere and races towards the mansion frantically. Killua's grandfather Zeno enters the dungeon and tells Miluki to stop and that Killua is free to leave. Without any hesitation, Killua breaks the chains and proceeds to go to his father's room. With his father, Killua happily tells all about the exam and how he has made new friends. His father pats his head and tells him to go meet them. But before he goes, Killua must promise to never betray them. They seal this promise by blood and Killua leaves. However, his mother comes in his way. Killua gives her the death stare before finally leaving. His mother screams at her husband, but he only gives back a sinister smile and says Killua will come back home again, since he is his son. On the other hand, Canary guides Gon and his friends to the butler's office. Kikyo, Killua's mother, is still angry that Silva, his father, has allowed Killua to leave. As a result, she directs Goto, the chief butler, to ensure that Killua does not meet Gon and others. As soon as Killua arrives at the butler's quarters, Goto instructs him to wait until Gon arrives. However, when the latter reaches the quarters, Goto informs them that Killua has not yet come, but that they are free to wait until he does. Meanwhile, he takes Kurapika, Gon, and Leorio through a gambling game to put them to the test before allowing them to access Killua, pretending as if he is not just one room away. The rules of the game are simple. He'll flip a coin and catch it in one of his hands. They'll have to guess which hand. It starts off easy, but luckily becomes much more difficult as he speeds up and puts more pressure on the group. Everyone who guesses incorrectly will be out, and if everyone is out, he won't let them meet Kilua. The trio come up with a strategy, but it only proves to be effective at the beginning. They appoint one person to look at one hand. The problem arises when they quickly run out of teammates and only Gon remains. Gon takes Leorio's knife and promises not to do anything stupid. Seconds later, he slashes himself around his eye. Nonetheless, this approach appears to be insane enough to actually work and lessen Gon's swelling, allowing him to use both eyes. The last play of the game is really interesting, with numerous butlers flipping the coin. Despite this, Gon still manages to notice that the coin is in the hand of the butler behind him. After Gon wins, Killua comes down because he was tired of waiting and we get a wholesome reunion. It's amusing how Killua can't recall Kurapika's name and mispronounces Leorio's. Goto clearly cares deeply for Killua as he appears to be pleased to see the boy happy. He also reveals that he has a trick up his sleeve all along and could have tampered with the game if he wanted to. So basically he let Gon and his gang win so Killua could be with his mates. Alongside Goto, Canary is also relieved now that Killua has reunited with his friends. Now that they have Killua, everyone has decided to pursue their individual goals. The first thing on Gon's agenda is obviously meeting Hisoka. He wants to give him back his tag from the game and punch him in the face, something Hisoka so desperately wants. Gon refuses to use any of the benefits of being a hunter until he has achieved the earlier mentioned goal because he won't consider himself a hunter until then. The only little problem is that he has absolutely no idea how to locate Hisoka. This eventually leads to Kurapika disclosing that Hisoka has whispered to him during the last stage of the exam. The latter had mentioned that if Kurapika wants to know some info on Phantom Troop, they can meet in York New City on September 1st, which is around six months from now. The significance of this occasion stems from the fact that the world's greatest auction will be held in York New City at the time, attracting many of the world's famous people, including the Phantom Troop. After this, the group decides to part ways with Kurapika deciding to work as a hunter, which will provide him with funds for the auction, and Leorio going home to resume his studies to become a doctor. They all agree to meet in York New City on September 1st. Now that Kilua and Gon are on their own, the former states that Gon needs to train harder than ever if he wants to face Hisoka, pointing out the ludicrous contrast in ability and physical strength between him and his target. He also claims to know of a means for them to train and earn money simultaneously, a place known as Heaven's Arena, their next destination. Back at Gon's homeland, Whale Island, a postman delivers a letter to Mito, Gon's aunt, while her grandmother observes from afar. She takes a glance at the letter and begins reading it. Gon asks her about her health and informs her that he is doing fine. She is overjoyed to find that he has passed the hunter test, but at the same time, she is somewhat confused to learn that he is not exactly thrilled over obtaining his hunter's license, all due to the circumstances with Hisoka. At the end, Mito and her grandmother lovingly hang the photo 
photo of Gon, Kilua, Kurapika, and Leorio and display it on the wall with a collection of other photographs. She then says while glancing at a photograph of Ging that Gon is truly his son and wonders whether he is watching over him. The end for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this recap, please consider to like and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to be notified of any new recaps. And while you're at it, check out this new anime recap appearing on the screen.